in the landscape that we feel um, has a lot of interaction with fire and we chose Pringle Bay for that reason. They have a history of wildfires um, that either go from the town to the protected areas or from the protected areas vice versa. And we wrote a report and what it entailed was that uh, you do a, what, basically a risk assessment. For instance, how close uh, natural vegetation are growing to the houses, uh, whether their numbers are visible, should the fire break out and the fire brigade has to come, turn around, um, alien vegetation, that type of thing. You come up with a score and the score that Pringle Bay got was not dangerous, it was extremely dangerous. Pringle Bay is a very conservation minded community and we felt that if we can sell the concept to them that um, they might adopt it and make it their own. What we did is we had a stakeholder meeting in town where all the local stakeholders of the area attended. For instance, the Ratepayers Association, the Conservancy, the municipality, and then identified stakeholders in the community. And at this meeting, we sold the concept to them. They were very keen to get it going because obviously fire is a huge issue in this area. The idea is for the community to take ownership of the concept. Fire is a major problem in this area because it's causing a havoc to our grazing, uh, grazing areas, for our animals, our houses, even in our livestock. If you look at the cause of the fire, we find that it's a lack of discipline. Some are burning the fires for the new uh, grass to grow. At the end of the day, they fail to control it. You see, what happens is that we've got people who stay there up there in the mountains and uh, they are looking after their cattle. So they stay there for quite a long time. They are the people who are causing fire. And also people who are removing honey from the trees because they bend the, 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 the tree so that the bees can fly away, they, then they can get the honey. problem area historically. They have uh, hundreds of fires every year because of the makeup of the area with um, a lot of forestry, a lot of rural communities surrounding the forestry areas. And last year in the Natal Midlands we had in the region of 25,000 hectares of land burnt. A lot of forestry going into hundreds of millions of rand in Natal. The Fire Protection Association in Richmond has been going for just over a year. I've been on a FireWise course with working on fire and this is where the FireWise initiative has come in. It's a great benefit to the Fire Protection Association because what it's allowing us to do is, is with our limited funding, it is allowing us to get into the rural areas where possibly 90% of our fires or our fire problems emanate from. The reason 
why we chose Eshowe is because in the whole Zululand area and KZN area, it has the most fires. It's been having the most fires for the last few years. And um, fires start from the communities and they are started by the community members. We have one season which we call the honey hunter season, which is March, April, May. And all these eucalyptus trees that you see around, they all flower over that period. And we get a massive influx of wild African bees. Lots of people go out and they actually smoke out that honey. The methods that they use to smoke it out, they normally use denim or car tire or something that's going to burn and make smoke. They make smoke, the bees go away, they then rob the hive and they then drop that burning uh, material, whatever it may be, on the forest floor. We can have up to 30, 40 fires a day. And then we have the formal fire season, which is um, uh, basically during winter months, which is um, early July right the way through to end of October until the first summer rains come. The, the number of fires that we received uh, last year, we received about 156 uh, fire calls. And uh, we attended, um, of which about, I think it's uh, 135. On June alone, we lost about 140 homes. Umlala's um, municipality has uh, 10 firefighters only to cover the area of uh, 2,300 uh, square kilometers. In terms of uh, South African national standards, it's, it's way too low and it's, 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 we cannot meet the standards due to the financial constraints. What we did was we decided because the Kruger and Teta Mushwa are very firebrand from this area, we got all the ward councillors together, we did a presentation to them to find out whether they would buy into, into a project like this and we got very good buy-in. It was just a frustration because uh, our fire vehicles are not staying at Matsulu, they are staying at Kanyamazan and it's only one car. So if the, the house is littered, it take close to five hours to come here. So it was very difficult. The house was totally burnt, no assistance. Our municipalities don't have enough resources. Uh, they're also widely spread. Uh, our closest assistance is, is Nelspreit, which is more than a half an hour's drive. Uh, a fire could spread very, very fast and huge areas can be burnt within, within a half an hour, uh, affecting the grazing affecting the animals and the livelihoods within these areas. We only have one uh, fire station here and they located maybe 100 kilometers away from the last village and that area, if they were to reach that, they will take some hours. So even if they report fire, when they arrive there, uh, the fire shall have done a lot of damage. It's a volunteer program which then becomes a part-time um, job program. Uh, we train them in basic firefighting and firewise principles. They go out to their communities and they then do these firewise principles within their communities. Um, the basic firefighting comes in for uh, initial attack if a fire starts small, or maybe a rubbish fire or something, there's always somebody around with a beater that can just attack, attack it there, keep it small. The first thing we did after starting off with a firewise in Betty's Bay was to have an open morning to inform the community of what the firewise was all about. Uh, the volunteer fire chief from Pringle Bay was the one who held the information session. It is a challenge to get people on board. And you have to keep on telling people why you're doing this. There's a lot of resistance from people because a lot of people want trees and there aren't really trees in Betty's Bay. They want their big trees and it's mostly then raycrons and alien trees. And we, we want to take those out because that's also adds to the, 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 the fire load in the area. This is what we call a worst case scenario, where a house is in between a lot of uh, felt, there's a, there's a high fuel load. So if there's a fire coming into this area, 
There's really no ways we can protect this house because it will be too dangerous. Clear around the house. We don't want a desert around the house. Cultivate more the garden. Make it a firewise garden concept. The alien vegetation is a problem because it is a huge, huge fire hazard. It also removes enormous amounts of water from the soil. We're trying to encourage the owners of the small holdings to, to actually remove the alien vegetation. So we go out to them. At the petrol station we hand pamphlets to them and also we go around to the homes and hand pamphlets. The most causes in our area I would put through do negligence. Uh, Brides not being extinguished correctly, uh, lightning is obviously a big factor, and then people just play, being plain ignorant to the law, that they do not abide the law, making fires at, at a place which, not des which are not designated to make a bride. And of course the big reason is also cigarette buds. The training that you have given to them is a very special training. It helps them, we actually teach them what to do. We actually take them to the field and uh, we make them aware in this area, they don't have enough water, they don't have fire trucks. We teach them the correct way of burning fire, fire bricks. In fact, we also advise them to say, if they want to burn fire, fire bricks, they should contact the firefighting teams that is very close to come and help them. Before the training, we were trying to stop fire, but without knowledge, because we were entering the fire anywhere, anyhow. We were burning, but after training now, we know we have realized that what we were doing first was wrong and dangerous. Part of, uh, of, the, of the lessons is for them to assess their own area. And then once they do that, then they get the score, which shows them are they risk or are they not at risk. And also they have to come up with their fire management plan of their own section. It's coming from them uh, with the activities that they've been doing. At school, children must be taught about fire because some of those children are smoking. During lunch time, they can smoke when the bell rings. They leave that fire there and go out. Some of the mamas here in the rural areas, they make fire anywhere because they want to cook. There's no electricity here. After making fire, he, she realizes, hey, I've got no water. Let me just take a bucket and go to the river. Leaving that, that fire alone there now. We have already reported to the chief that in his meetings, he mustn't forget to remind the communities about fire. And we shall be there whenever he has a meeting to teach the community about fire. We had a problem with the water and surrounding this area. We start looked around of how we can bring water around so we can have a, this total water filled up with the water. We asked for the support with, with municipality, with some supplement of a piping and all, but uh, all our requests went in vain. So we decided to, to contribute from our pockets and we bought pipes and we bought some other tanks and then we start putting the pipes down. Due to the commitment with community and other businesses, we have completed putting the piping down. The people must take the responsibility and I'm happy that the government is actually supporting us by funding us to go back to the people to give them the responsibility. Because we believe in 